the Great Pyramid mystery has been finally solved. The Great Pyramid of Giza, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, is visited by millions of tourists every year. If you have been to Egypt, you probably also have a fun picture of you pointing at the top of the pyramids or holding the Sphinx in your hand. You only have to travel 15 miles from the center of modern Cairo to find yourself thousands of years back in time, in your imagination, even though the pyramids help a lot to make it seem real. Many scientists, archaeologists, and history fans would give anything to travel in time to answer one question. It has been the topic of debate and research for centuries. How was the Great Pyramid built? Were aliens involved in the process? Good news is, you don't have to wait for time travel to be invented to find out the answer. The mystery has finally been solved. Brightside is going to tell you who made the Pyramid of Giza as great as we know it and how they managed to do it. Give this video a like if you've always wanted to know this secret from the past. Your history teacher back at school must have told you the prevailing theory of how the Great Pyramid was built. Hundreds of ancient Egyptians carried huge blocks of limestone and granite to Giza. They built construction, which was great indeed. The Pyramid of Khufu remained the tallest structure on Earth made by humans for over 3,800 years. It was composed of 2.3 million stone blocks put together so precisely that a human hair could not pass through the adjoining blocks. Impressive, huh? More than that, the Great Pyramid was originally covered with highly polished limestone, which reflected the sunlight and made it shine like a star. The light was so strong it could be seen from the moon. Sadly, the casing stones are no longer there because of an earthquake, which happened in the 14th century. We can only imagine how beautiful it must have been. The pyramid was also unique because it had inner passages going both up and down, unlike the other pyramids. What else makes it stand out? It is the only eight-sided pyramid in Egypt. It aligned with the stars in Orion's belt and pointed to the pole star Alpha Draconis. Finally, it is the most accurately aligned construction ever created facing true north. It is exactly at the center of the landmass of our planet. The parallels and meridians which cross the most land only meet in two places on Earth. One of them is in the deep blue ocean. The other one is where the Great Pyramid is. What a great place to build something monumental, isn't it? All this proves how skilled the people must have been to be able to build it. Some scientists who lived centuries after them, and some people today, still refuse to believe the ancient civilizations were that smart and talented. So, the Great Pyramid has given birth to many theories. How and for what was it constructed? You definitely heard some people believe it was done with the help of aliens. After all, many great constructions on Earth, like Stonehenge, Teotihuacan, and Easter Island's figures apparently look too good or too genius for their time. So someone just decided they must have come from a different planet. But there are more bizarre theories which have to do with the Great Pyramid. People in medieval Europe believed the pyramids were built to store grain. According to them, they were Joseph's granaries, described in the Old Testament. In 1859, a British publisher, John Taylor, concluded that the pyramid was, in fact, not built by aliens or the Egyptians, but by Noah himself. Yes, the Noah who also built the Ark. Taylor has done some major calculations and even come up with a special measurement term, the pyramid inch, which, according to him, was nearly identical to the British inch. An astronomer from Scotland named Charles Piazzi Smith was so inspired by Taylor's writings, he did decide to do his own research. The results were published in 1864 as a book of 664 pages. Imagine the amount of time that research has taken him. The result was pretty interesting. Smith stated that the pyramid, if you measured it in pyramid inches, could be read as a history book of both the past and the future of the Earth. The Grand Gallery, for example, which was the sloping passage, marked the birth and 
33 inches later, the crucifixion of Jesus. The gallery ended at a point somewhere between 1,881 and 1,911 pyramid inches. Smith believed it to mean the years of great tribulation before the second coming of Christ. Some scientists denied the holy origins of the pyramid altogether. In 1884, a paper was presented at a conference in Philadelphia. It said the pyramids were originally hills. Those hills were used as quarries to get enough stone for edifices. As time passed, the hills were cut into pyramids. Probably one of the most interesting theories of the pyramid's construction involved levitation. Not the Wingardium Leviosa one used by Harry Potter and others in the magical world, but a different kind of levitation. The one that has to do with the power of the human mind and sound vibration. Acoustic levitation helped stone blocks defy gravity and move over the ground, believed the supporters of this theory. Aliens? Noah? Levitation? What really helped to build the Great Pyramid? We are about to find out. Click thumbs up if you can't wait to get the answer. We have it. It remained a mystery for centuries, but now it has been solved. New proof has been found to tell us how the Egyptians were able to transport 2.5 ton blocks of limestone and granite for 500 miles to build the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu in 2600 BC. Pharaohans did not spare money for the construction of the pyramids. They hired the best architects and engineers of the time to be in charge of the construction. Of course, they did not do the hard stone-carrying work themselves and gave this task to an army of slaves. They had 170,000 tons of limestone to transport to the construction spot. How did they do it? A 45-year-old scroll of papyrus found in Wadi al-Yarf, a Red Sea port, has shed light on the mystery. It turned out to be the Diary of Merer, an overseer of a team of elite workers written in the 27th year of Pharaoh and Khufu's reign. The diary, which was more of a logbook, described the construction process of the Great Pyramid with all the details we did not know before. According to this precious archaeological material, laborers transported limestone from Tura to Giza in wooden boats. In hieroglyphic letters, Merer described the daily lives of workers in the course of several months, as they were busy with transportation. First, they had to transform the landscape to divert water from the Nile and direct it to the pyramid through artificial canals. Then, they started transportation of limestone blocks from Tura downstream to the construction spot. The journey took around three days. Now, the question is, where did that clever system of waterworks go? It could not have disappeared with no trace at all. That is right. Archaeologists say they found evidence of it beneath the Giza Plateau, where the central canal was flowing. Seven boat pits have also been located around Khufu's pyramid, two to the west and the east of it, two between the Queen's pyramids, and the remaining one beside the mortuary temple. More than that, archaeologists manage to find ceremonial boats. They give a good explanation of the ship's construction process. Now, the secret of the Great Pyramid is no longer a mystery to you. You see, it took no aliens, but hard work, limestone, and wooden boats to create one of the wonders of the ancient world. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and make sure to subscribe to our channel not to miss any updates. More amazing stories are on their way to you. Join us on the Bright Side.